is the story of her life, and no doctor can help her. Here's Deborah Roberts. She's got looks. Camille's a former model. She's got brains, an honors degree, a master's in teaching. But she's got something else, too. Something less desirable. Students wouldn't want to come near me. They would say things like, ooh, this classroom stinks like dead fish. They would call me Miss Fishy. Simply put, Camille, who asks us not to use her last name because speaking out is so difficult, often has a smell, a pungent, unpleasant odor, like spoiled fish. I didn't know why I was emitting such a strong odor, and it's not just body odor. I mean, it can fill an entire room, and recently it filled an auditorium. An auditorium? It's a very heavy, intense, dark, deep smell. Her job as a teacher became excruciating. I was so focused on, do I smell? Do I smell? Are they saying things? Are they whispering? Are they laughing about me? Same thing that I used to go through for my whole life. Why does she smell? A smell that showers can't erase, that perfume can't cover. It's a medical mystery that Camille has struggled to understand for nearly 30 years. It took her self-esteem. Now it was taking her profession. I would open windows, I would leave the door open, I put fans in my classrooms, I mean the whole nine yards. And inside you're feeling what? Panic, absolute panic. And pain, mm -hmm. right? Oh, I would cry all the way home from school, all the time. Her childhood was no easier. Camille's ordeal began in first grade. One of my teachers asked me if I was showering every day. And from that point on, she kind of sat me in the corner of the classroom. And kids would call me a freak. They would tell me I smelled like horse manure, uh, dead fish. Dead fish. We're instinctively programmed to stay away from that smell because it helps keep us from eating spoiled or dangerous food. That unpleasant odor is what Camille smelled like. Even worse, she couldn't detect the smell on herself. So she never knew when it was out of control it made for many humiliations. I had an incident in middle school where a bunch of kids cornered me in the cafeteria and threw tuna fish sandwiches at me. Then there was work, one of her first jobs as a teller in a credit union. And my supervisor would come by and spray my area with perfume, Lysol, and they put me in the drive through section which is separate from the rest of the teller area. Her social life was just as painful. Camille did date on and off, but if anyone got too close... You play that game with yourself. Well, I love him, so I've got to let him go because he deserves better than me. These stories are just heartbreaking, Camille. How did you even begin to cope with that? I always thought, I'm a freak. If you only knew the truth about me, you start to see yourself as, as an other, not quite human. She went to doctor after doctor, internist, gynecologists. No one helped. And just months after she started that dream teaching job, her first with her new master's degree, Camille quit under the strain, making other plans. You feel incredibly helpless and hopeless. I'm tired of being ridiculed and feeling like a freak, so I'm going to take my own life. It got that bad. Yeah. In a deep depression, Camille was on the internet when a lucky click brought her the answer. And all I did was type in fishy body odor. Then this one thing came up, trimethylmanuria. They're saying that this chemical, trimethylamine, comes out of your body and smells like dead fish. Trimethylmanuria, TMAU for short. Was there a name to her disorder? Other people who would understand? Another computer click brought up the TMAU Foundation and the woman behind it. Sandy also suffered from the disorder, though she didn't know it for years. In fact, she remembers even calling the maintenance man to her New York City apartment to check her bathroom. It just smelled horribly. I thought maybe there was some kind of a problem with the sewer. It wasn't the sewer, it was Sandy. But she didn't put two and two together until later when a coworker explained why everyone was complaining about the bad smell in the office. 
She said, but Sandy, I have to tell you that it's coming from you. And I literally broke down because it all clicked and I realized she was telling the truth. Her search for that elusive TMAU diagnosis took years and her life savings. I literally spent like $27,000 of my own money. Oh, I had like eight different um, unnecessary and unwarranted surgeries. It was a dentist who saved her. Sandy's breath made him suspect TMAU. He sent her to Philadelphia's Monell Institute and Dr. George Preddy, where Sandy got her diagnosis. Dr. Preddy is an expert in the rare genetic disorder, which has only 600 documented patients in the world. In these people, a faulty enzyme causes the buildup of a chemical called TMA, and TMA smells like dead fish. Because it's a volatile chemical, it will come out through the lungs, it'll get into your, your sweat, your spit, and other body secretions. So that's how it imparts its odor to the individual. Just about every food available, eggs, meats, many types of beans, milk, cheese, bread, and of course, fish can lead to the buildup of TMA. The odor will vary from time to time in, in accordance with the patient's diet. To diagnose Camille, Dr. Preddy checked her TMA levels. They were sky high. Camille's an extreme case. Her diet is now restricted to foods that can't be converted to TMA to try to minimize the odor. That leaves her cupboards and refrigerator nearly bare. This is basically the rye crisps with a little bit of apple butter spread on there and then a slice of turkey in between. But I mean, seriously, I smell nothing other than powder and a little perfume, maybe. Mm -hmm. And that's good. That's what, that's what I want. That's what I'm hoping. That's, I hope it stays that way. In fact, Camille has developed all sorts of routines to try to keep the odor at bay, like taking chlorophyll tablets every day and showering over and over again. Lather, rinse, repeat. I wash with several different products and I scrub very hard. I use two different kinds of deodorant and a lot of perfume. Before I actually leave the house, I spray all of my clothes with Febreze, all up and down. And I also spray my feet and my socks. Her whole life, Camille has never met anyone like herself. That is about to change. Is that Camille? <laughs> We brought them together for the first time. Camille credits Sandy with saving her from despair. I honestly don't think I would be here right now if it, if it weren't for you. I brought this to show you. This is only a bunch of mine. <laughs> oh, my. These are the useless medications for conditions she didn't have. I don't even remember what this one was for. But it says have a pleasant day on the label, so, you know. This one, you're letting it go because you're not angry. Sandy's hoping that her foundation will eventually find a cure for the isolating disorder. We can't let it be our whole existence, and we're going to lick this thing. And Camille wants to devise a school curriculum to help children who are different in any way so they won't have to endure the ridicule she once did. And now that she can give it a name, Camille has finally